up to take my medication. I love to take my fun little pills, fun little pills. I love to have my medication and have my little pills, my pills. Give me my dosage at this time that I always take my pills. I need to have a drink and some food so that I'm not nauseous when I have my medication cause it's making me mentally stable even though there's so many side effects but i love when i wake up in the morning and i don't want to kill myself i take my pills at night my medication i take my pills at the right time of day every single day i okay that's enough hi guys and welcome back to another episode um this is the same day that I recorded the first episode of this series and I have a new microphone actually so this one is one that I can just comfortably record in bed with because one of the main issues that I faced when I originally started recording things was because I was depressed and I was always in bed and it's hard to record things with a standing microphone when um, you can barely get up but now I have one that I can just hold in bed um, so at least at the times where I feel the motivation but my body doesn't want to get up not want physically can't because of mental issues um, now I have another option so I am ready to yap but I'm also at home but I'm ready to yap but I'm also at home, but I'm ready to yap. I wanted to talk about social media and its impact on my mental health over how many years? Oh my gosh. I started to originally really actually get a social media and near the end of high school. So I was given the opportunity to develop a sense of self outside of the internet in the way that Okay, actually, let me take that back because it's not like I was independent of it. I definitely developed a lot of my attitudes and interests through the internet, but not in the way that most people were socialized because of the fact that I was mostly removed from social media. But it didn't take long for social media's way of developing new insecurities for you to focus on and just making life very questionable within your perception of self and what you should be doing with your time you know it definitely uh it it did what it does and so I definitely had that experience of I I participated a lot in this one trend where it looked like I just had this really bad nose job but it didn't look like a nose job it kind of just looked like really weird and it's actually still very popular amongst a lot of women and generally like some makeup artists who just like think that it's cute I guess and that's not a problem at all for them it's more so I was doing it from a place of (sighs) self-hatred sorry guys it's like 11 p.m but um yeah I was definitely doing it from a self-hatred place evil I hate my face place even though after I got out of high school 
I never really had a reason to think of my nose as being something that was unattractive about my face. And mind you, when I was younger, I had kids call me like witch nose and stuff like that, which is very strange because I just had a pointed downturned nose. And now when I look at my face, I'm like, why did I ever hate my nose? Like, if you guys look up aquiline nose, that's what I have. My face is kind of slender. And so I have a lot of a heart heart face shape basically going on with an aquiline nose. And... I look very serious and kind of old-fashioned at times, which is very funny, actually. Um, And I really like how I look, to be honest. And definitely with the recovery, um, when I look myself in the mirror, I actually kind of feel like I care about myself. It's very interesting. It's a very new feeling. Um... And there's a lot of relief in that, for sure. So let me think. I think after that phase, there was also a lot of hyperfixation on my hair. Of course, because of my development with the, the self-hatred and everything. Because of it, socially and also because of just racism, but also like oh, your hair's so big, or, like, you can't really straighten it, or, like, it's it can't really ever get straight. And it's also, you know, a manageability situation. Like, you know, you spend years of your life not knowing how to properly manage something that is very much integral to your day-to-day life. Like, hello, it's your hair. Everyone sees it. Everyone talks about it. Everyone makes you feel like you're this thing. It can be a lot. Uh Uh-oh, I'm feeling nauseous right now because... uh Uh-oh. Because I didn't eat with my pill. So... Uh (sighs) Uh-oh. I'm also very tired. But... So I'm gonna... I'm gonna try and make this... Quicker. (laughs) Um... I feel like when it comes to the specific areas of hair and contrast with the wig culture and the extensions and the braids and that I tried to do everything but it never compared to the idea of actually having a good relationship with my hair and actually having good hair quote unquote and at the end of the day I was never going to have good hair quote unquote not because I didn't have nice hair but the idea of good hair was still outside of the scope of what I actually deal with I don't have loose curls loose manageable curls and on the days that you think I do I promise you they have been manipulated Like me when I thought that this guy that I went out with last week was actually interested in me. Um, after he told me he missed me and really wanted to see me and like wanted to bring me food and bought me flowers and paid for dinner and blah, blah, blah. And then the next day he was just like, yeah, I met someone and I think we were just going too fast. And I'm thinking to myself, oh... Wait a minute. Who are we talking to right now? I felt like, you know that one scene on TikTok that has gone kind of viral of Samantha from Sex in the City? She's on the phone and she's like, th- there's this guy who calls her and says, it's over. I I told my wife. And then she says, who is this? Like, I'm looking at this message, right? And I'm just like, oh... And, like, this wave of, like, not disgust, but, like, what just happened? And so my brain was kind of like, um, okay. 
And because of the recovery, I don't really over hyper self deprecate react anymore. My body and my brain just kind of go like, oh, that's weird and strange. Let's move on, which I'm very grateful for. But um, what was the point of me bringing that up? Right. Manipulative, right? So <laughs> with the hair, <laughs> it's just kind of like, you know, like I must have manipulated that hair, bro, because you, yeah. And so that came with all the damaging of the hair and the the really negative connection I had with it. And some forms of self-harm ended up manifesting in me pulling my hair and cutting my hair and like pulling at my head. And it's also because of the pain that I would experience just in general from having my particular hair texture, the combing, the knotting, the manipulation of the hair, the, the just everything just gets so overwhelming. And with my physical issues sometimes because you have this huge puff of thick curly hair you get overwhelmed and overheated when I would have certain reactions because I would have extreme pain spells um, especially during my period and my body's going into this complete reaction and one of the main things is also just heat flashes whilst also being cold in the middle of the chest. It was very strange and um, always ve- it was always very shocking and scary and painful, really painful. And um, I still live in constant fear that I might have those reactions to my physical pains. And that's why I'm hopeful that the birth control will help manage certain things and... Uh, I might even do that thing that some women do where they completely skip their period so as to avoid the experience of that kind of um, horror ever again, um, or at least for a very, very long time. But I digress. My point in stating that is that, you know, my connection with my hair was very difficult and painful. And so uh, it got to the point where I had told myself that not only was it extremely ugly, but the only way I could even like my hair is if I detached from it. So I ended up cutting basically all of it off. I had like an inch of hair when I first started to go in person for university. It was not a look. Um, Although it definitely made an impression. (laughs) I am not someone that should have, uh, that should have short hair, to put it kindly. And, but I'm very grateful for the experience that I had and relearning sort of what relationship I should have with my hair. But that was also a cause of social media, I have to say, that and my socialization. And then finally, and most importantly, the brain rot. I feel like a lot of internet terminology and exhaustion that I experienced with social media came from the brain rot and the internet culture of certain words and and the vocabularies and the trends and the hyper packaging of new labelings of different things and aesthetics to the point where it just gets exhausting and as it ended up coinciding with my developing interest in philosophy and um, new economic philosophies and stuff like that, I started to become very aware of what I was feeding my brain and the bullshit that I was absorbing from a lot of social media accounts, specifically on Instagram, where I eventually started to feel sick at the fact that I was scrolling. And yes, there's doom scrolling, but there was just also the sickness and the fact that I had spent my entire life sort of caged and limited. And yet here I was as a young adult choosing to limit and cage myself to a rectangle. And it dawned on me either some point last year, it was really starting to hit, but especially earlier this year, how 
much of a waste social media has been for me. Everyone has their different way of using social media. And if you think that it's healthy and you don't think that it's stealing your time in your life, continue to have fun. But I didn't find it fun, especially earlier this year. I ended up thinking to myself, you know, how many hours of my life are being stolen by the internet in a way that isn't reciprocal? Like, am I taking anything from this information that's actually going to benefit my life, benefit my mind? No. So why am I doing it? And why am I doing it for hours? Why is my screen time so high despite all the things that I'm trying to do with my life? And again, this was before accepting diagnosis and therapy. Like, why are we not thinking with our minds right now and we're being a passenger to our consciousness that is ridiculous and unacceptable and very if I I honestly it's reckless it's reckless to have a mind and operate as a passenger or a backseat fucking driver to your consciousness why would I ever and now even with this clarity within the recovery even more so but even then, I was thinking to myself, why am I consenting to this? I'm willingly letting myself rot my brain when it is the most powerful. It is not only the necessary, but it's also the sufficient organ within the mind, um, within the body, I meant to say. The mind is incredible, and I'd be very curious to research more um stuff in terms of philosophical cognitive science but just the mind is so fascinating and I feel like it is really disgusting the way that most people let themselves spoil their minds with certain content and not you know seeking information or at least seeking positive media um Media that helps people, media that helps you stay informed, media that helps your consciousness positively. Like, I wasn't doing those things, and also my feed was curated in a particular manner. So, I was just like, why am I here? What am I benefiting from this? What am I doing here? And so, I got rid of it. I got rid of social media, and I also wanted to cleanse myself even more from my cellular device so I ended up getting a flip phone and the flip phone has been absolutely fucking life-changing I'm I'm standing on it when I say that the flip phone I'm never getting rid of now would it be nice to have a phone that isn't a rinky dinky little iPhone 7, 8, and it's like, you know, definitely need to be replaced? Yeah, sure. That, yeah. However, however, um, the flip phone has changed my life for the better. Everyone just calls me because they know that I can barely text on that thing. Um, I get voice messages now, voicemails, and I have hours long conversations with my friends on a little flip phone. The phone lasts hours and hours and hours, honestly days, because it's a flip phone. And so it's not using all these other different things. There's the iPhone list dip by like the end of the day. And it's so annoying. It's freaking annoying. Um, but you know, so the flip phone's just been amazing. And I just feel like it's the perfect excuse not to look at my stupid iPhone. It's easy and it keeps me at peace. It gives me the option to not waste my fucking life. I feel like consumption, overconsumption is especially yes. And that within the digital space specifically. Being constantly sold to is exhausting. 
And because I am fascinated by marketing, I love it. Don't get me wrong. Like there's a lot of irony in this because I love it. I'm very fascinated by it. And I'm starting to develop a much more interest in, in sociology in that specific area of marketing um, and accessibility and just what people respond to. But conversely, I also know the power of it. And I know when it's happening and it got annoying. Why can't I open my devices for them to be and for them to be safe spaces? And it doesn't feel like a safe space when it feels like your, your eyes and your mind and your soul are being bought on a constant basis. It didn't feel like safe. And considering how much money I've spent on my technology, I would like to feel safe while using it. Hello. And um, so, yeah, I also ended up switching from the Apple laptop that I had. I mean, I still have it. I use it for certain things, but it's uh, it's more of a desktop at this point. And I'm using this Microsoft, sorry, this um, this PC computer. And I love it. And I love that as I've been maturing my priorities within my technologies are so much healthier and efficient. And I'm very proud of myself for the, tr- the transition that I've made. Um, and I put specific barriers especially at the beginning of this year, so as to not be tempted to do certain things. And I think other than somewhat mindless scrolling on Pinterest, I have been very removed now from bullshit internet usage. Anytime I spend on TikTok, I do not have an account that I use, although I am probably going to have to start back an account to promote the podcast and um, my other endeavors. But as for personal usage, anything I see on my TikTok has always just now like informational advice, financial tips, like economics. Is a recession coming? Like (laughs) stuff like that. And um, or like funny things here and there, of course. But it's not in the way that it was before and it doesn't feel like it is a certain way anymore and if it ever does again I can just as easily get rid of it in the same way that I deactivated my Instagram again recently because at one point I felt again that I was scrolling too much and that I was wasting my time and that I was texting too much and yeah and whether or not I was by any standard it doesn't matter it felt like I was violating a commitment I made to myself So in terms of social media, as much as I recognize its power and how I can use it as a positive vessel, I also try to actively remove myself from using it on a consistent basis. And now, because of the training I put myself through at the beginning of this year, especially, like I was already developing an aversion for sure, but because of the effort that I put in this year, I'm like basically independent from it. I go an entire day not looking at my iPhone very easily. My flip phone, I cannot live without. I love my two, three hour chit chats with my friends, but yeah, I am living pretty, pretty large anatomically. I mean, aton- atom- atomically like neuron neurologically yeah neurologically speaking of neurons um i'm gonna go to bed (laughs) um this is definitely how long was this 24 minutes that's pretty short for me yapping um but what else could i talk about in terms of social media And my development in contrast with my mental health. Oh yeah. Um, I've never seen a point in sort of doing the body comparison thing. But I will say that I'm always going to feel excited and proud for people I see online posting themselves in terms of their physical development. 
And I do save a lot of inspo and I've learned a lot for my physical health from the internet. So that's a positive. And other aspects, celebrity culture. I think the only person I'm really in tune with lately is this Madeline RG girl. And that's because honestly, she also talks about mental health issues. And I also really like her aesthetics and how she talks about certain things. She's a bit funny. She's she's quite funny, actually. Quite, quite. And she's from the UK. And I quite like her, um, what she's produced. Yeah. Because social media is very removed from my life now. So I have quite little, I have, I have quite, I have little to say on the subject I just think that it's very also common sense at this point in time that it's not good for your mental health and being someone that has anxiety issues you know the access to looking oh is this person active oh did this person post oh did they see my story oh maybe they don't like me anymore because they haven't looked at this in a long time you know those were very childish but also anxiety ridden thoughts that I used to have um a lot And there's still a lot of work that I'm having to do to make sure that I don't fall back into stupid thoughts like that. But I haven't had to apply that since I've started the recovery. So, nonetheless. I think my biggest piece of advice... My biggest piece of advice to you, if you're looking to stop using social media, is to stop. Because you don't need it. I'm living proof. If your friends actually give a fuck about you, they'll be able to just text you or call you or leave you a voice message. iMessage, voice message. WhatsApp. WhatsApp is not a social media platform. I mean, they they were trying it with the little story update activity status. Whatever the heck. It is not cute. I think I might be one of the only people to have posted an update status at all (laughs) of of all the people I know and people who know each other on WhatsApp within my social circles. Um, And I think that's specifically because I had posted a joke where I'm like, yeah, no more social media again. I'm going to frolic in the woods. And it was this really pixelated image because WhatsApp had poorly... Uh, process the image that I tried to upload it was very funny (laughs) and what's funny is only I think two of my friends saw that post and they were just kind of like probably thinking you know does Sierra not know that this is not this is not a a thing on whatsapp just because it's an option doesn't mean you do it um if you want to get off of social media, just do it. Like, there are definitely other content that um, give more detailed explanations of how to do it. And I will definitely make a video like that maybe in the morning tomorrow. But, you know, this has been my journey. It's more so it's been like a a transition from depending on it to kind of actualize a vision for myself that I never got to when I was younger like I wanted to become this socially acceptable person I wanted to be that so bad and I had to kind of kill that person who wanted that so desperately in order to become more myself and with that you know there are some regrets like how long it's gonna take for my hair to grow now but also I don't have an unhealthy relationship with my hair anymore If he grows, he grows. This is life. Follicles. Again. There's also a... I am fortunate to not come from a line of... um, A family that is prone to addiction. So, when it came to stopping using social media, it was quite easy. That might not be your experience. That's true. But if you value your mind, and if you value your time, 
there are resources and manners in which you can apply those two sets of values and actually get the result you want, which is to not use social media like it's your freaking air. I think one of the most frustrating things is when I get on public transportation and I'm one of the only people not looking at my phone. I think I see someone reading a book on public transportation maybe once a month and everyone else is on their phone today I saw a man playing Candy Crush on his phone and he appeared to be considerably older than myself and I'm thinking to myself if all of these people on this ride have Wi-Fi and are possibly all doing just as pointless things on their phones. How is society functioning? And yeah, okay, like, I don't mean that with absolute seriousness, but I did cross my mind. How is it that we have even been keeping on at a level of consciousness that's acceptable when everyone is begging to be distracted? Everyone is begging to be distracted. Everyone's trying to find a problem and then be distracted with it. Or find something that they don't realize is a problem yet and then be distracted with it. I know I was. I definitely fell victim to this. I was like, this is a grown man playing Candy Crush on the subway. And you're probably like, Sierra, leave that man alone. He's playing Candy Crush on the subway. Like, obviously, he's not doing too good. I'm thinking to myself, no, like, you're an adult. Uh, And I know you're on your way to work, so you want to blow off some steam. But I want better for humanity. We used to make hieroglyphs and fucking shoot deer and write Plato's Republic, okay? We're better than this. It's very frustrating because these are small variables that all end up piling onto each other and eventually show us a horrible image of what most of our society is accepting today. And when people say that we're in the age of distraction, my main thing is why don't we listen? Like you hear that term, you saw that Netflix series that about the the way people are capitalized on through big data. You know this information you've been told you've been warned by your educators you've been warned by the government these people have been sued and you don't care and so I'm sat there on the subway and I'm thinking to myself this person just doesn't care we're no longer in a society where someone has an excuse or a reason to not know that they're being like taken advantage of in that way specifically within the context of big data and being sold to and social media and dopamine and blah blah blah. you know there's no way you have an iphone and don't know that you're consenting to damaging yourself at this point because that's what it is now The information is everywhere. The information is probably there when you open your iPhone and you get on YouTube for the first time ever. And there's probably a video up there trending explaining how you're being exploited. But you're content because it's the iPhone 15. So I don't think about this situation that a lot of people commit themselves to through their inaction or their lack of caring for the self and the mind and what the mind is processing I have trouble 
rationalizing it and because I have trouble rationalizing it at times I do have trouble sympathizing but I know that social media addiction is real and I know that many people are suffering in ways that I'll never be able to understand partly because of ignorance that I may have at this time and also because that's not my life experience but what I can say is that within that spectrum there is choice Because, again, social media is not a need. You don't need it to text people in your class. You don't need it to do this or that or this or that. You could just uh, grow a pair. Do you care about yourself and your mental health? Do you care about how you're breathing, how you're thinking, what your mind is processing within the conscious and subconscious? Or do you want to see another cat reel? Seems pretty obvious what choice you should make and what choice you shouldn't. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Wow.